Hey, good morning to you on this toasty Wednesday morning. Uh, another hot one today. Uh, but you know what? It's summertime, and that's what happens in the summertime. So uh, anyhow, this is Pastor Randy Scott from Iron Faith Fellowship Church with our morning tidbits this morning, just words of encouragement through tough times. Uh, and we need to be exhorting and building up uh, uh, even when we see tough times coming. We need to come alongside each other and be a support uh, to one another. And uh, that's why we need uh, words of encouragement. We need words of exhortation, uh, words to, to, that will point us to the word of God and uh, take us where we need to be at that moment in time. And uh, uh, I want to talk to you about that exact thing, heart thoughts. Did you see the bottom ribbon going across heart thoughts. <clears throat> and again, you know, uh, you know, the Bible talks about what's in your heart is what usually comes out. So we've got to be cautious sometimes. That's why it says, you know, we need to, to hold our tongues once in a while because, you know, what might be in our heart might not be a great thing to say. Uh, but the Lord knows our hearts already, you know, and he wants to hear from us, but from the heart. Because, you know, that's where truth is. You know, and we use that illustration a lot of times, the heart, the heart. And uh, it's not just about uh, our emotions. OK, it's about our spiritual relationship also with the Lord. Uh, the heart is used many different times in Scripture. And uh, you'll see I'm going to use uh, uh, go into Psalms again and uh, speak uh, a verse uh, out of there that really, really, to me, speaks to this uh, situation. When you're coming before the Lord, the Lord wants to hear your heart. OK, that spiritual side, when you're coming before him, you know, we think about what to say, and what not to say. But, you know, he just wants your heart. You know, to reveal your heart. And again, know this. I'm reminding you again. He already knows it. Okay. He knows where your heart's at. So if you're holding a spirit of bitterness, a spirit of anger, uh, those type of things, that's what's in your heart. That's probably what is going to come out. And sometimes even then we need to talk to God about that. You know, let, let that heart flow out. So it kind of cleans things up a little bit and puts us back in the right perspective. And again, a right relationship. Uh, I love that part about that part in, in our communion uh, where it says to examine ourselves. You know, uh, we need to do that when we become come before the Lord anyway. You know, we need to examine ourselves to make sure that we're coming before him in a right manner or to coming before him to repent of some things. Uh, take care of business and uh, just reveal our heart thoughts, because that's the more intimate place. You know, that heart illustration is, is a very intimate place. And, uh, you know, when you're saved, it says, you know, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart. Okay, God raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. And uh, it's with the heart one believes. The mouth is confession. Maybe it's with the heart one believes in righteousness. So in the heart illustration there means it's that more intimate, deeper relationship that you're in. It's just like salvation is not a feeling, not an emotion. It's a happening. It's a transformation. It's a change that takes place deep inside. Okay. You take it from here and it goes into here. And that's where the transformation takes place because you've got to be clean from the inside out. Okay. Because man's heart is what? Exceedingly wicked. So the heart is, is a very key uh, element uh, in the believer's lives and in the lost lives. OK, because, again, once they believe with their whole heart, they cannot know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They cannot be in an intimate relationship. And that's what the Lord wants is that intimate relationship. And when we come before him in prayer, the same thing. He wants that intimacy with us. You know, he wants our heart thoughts. And when we get to that place, OK, when we're before him, like no matter what is happening, Lord, you know, I just want to. I just want to reveal my heart to you, Lord. I know you know it already, but I just need to reveal it. I just need to open it up and, and just let it come forth. And Lord, I know you're hearing me. I know you're going to help me through this or whatever the prayer may be coming from your heart. Uh, uh, that's what you're going to share with him. So let's go to Psalm 73. And uh, I'm going to read uh, verses 26, actually, through 28. And again, this is the difference between, you know, the, if you read this whole psalm, it's talking about the difference between the wicked and righteous and uh, uh, that type of thing. But the, the writer just hits uh, just hit home here. Uh, I felt it really applied to, to our heart thoughts. So listen to the word of God this morning. Psalm 73, verses 26 through 28. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. 
You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. There you go. Those are heart thoughts. I just thought that was pretty deep uh, this morning uh, when I was searching the scriptures to, uh, to come up. Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, the Pharisees were whitewashed tombs. Uh, man, Jesus knew their hearts, didn't they? Man, they were just dead inside. And that's not what God wants for us, is it? Not what Jesus wants for us. He wants us uh, quickened in the spirit, made alive. And uh, he doesn't want us walking around like we're tombs, you know, dead to the world. So heart thoughts, make sure we uh, bring our heart thoughts to the Lord. And, and uh, he wants to hear those things. And uh, uh, he wants that intimacy with all of us. So good morning, everybody. Let me take a little time. Hey, Cheryl, Charlie, good morning. Good to see you, Mark. Uh, Brother Hubert, how you doing? Facebook users, I don't know who that is. Uh, might be Yvonne, uh, might be Margie. Uh, but anyhow, someone's there. Mark, yes, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you, Mark. That's always encouraging words there from the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, for these morning tidbits. We thank you that, uh, that we can taste and see that you're good. Uh, Father, even when we see troubled times coming our way, Lord God, we need to be building each other up, exhorting one another, encouraging one another uh, to get into your word, to spend more time with you, uh, Lord, to build that relationship with you, Lord, to be discipled, uh, to become into a deeper relationship with you. Father, that our heart thoughts are so wrapped around you, uh, Lord, nothing can, can break that down. So, Father, I pray that our emotions don't control us, but, Father, that our spiritual life takes over. So help us, guide us, Father, as we bring our heart thoughts to you this morning, that we lift up those that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that they would take that time right now to confess with their mouth, but believe in their heart, deep in their heart, deep in their inner being, that they would be changed, transformed, and renewed to know you as Lord. Father, we thank you for this is a day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. And we say this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, I have a funeral to go to tomorrow morning, so there'll be no more uh, no morning tidbits uh, tomorrow morning. But Friday morning, I will be back, Lord willing, at 10 a.m. for morning tidbits. Love you guys. God bless. Don't stress. Give God the mess. He'll take care of the rest. And we'll see you Friday morning, 10 a.m. for morning tidbits. Bye-bye.